the cloud well. That's the magic word for the day. This is Think Tech Hawaii. I'm Jay Fidel. It's a nine o'clock block on a given Tuesday. Uh, and this Vic Arch Archaria, I get that right? Yeah. Acharya. Uh, Acharya. Uh, yeah. Okay. And he's the CEO and founder of Cloudwell. And we need to know more about Cloudwell. We need to know why, what it does, how it does, what its future. I mean, I'm bristling with questions about Cloudwell. Welcome to the show, Vic. Thanks. Aloha, Jay. Thanks for having me. Happy to be on. So in 2,000 words or less, what is Cloudwell? So Cloudwell Health is Hawaii born and raised. It is the first all digital physician founded telehealth organization. And so through a virtual platform, a smartphone, a computer, a laptop, patients can access a Hawaii board certified doctor from the comfort of their home, uh, during a workplace break, to access medical care, such as primary care, pediatrics, urgent care, or mental health services. And so the company was really founded to provide nice accessibility for medical services for all of the residents in the state of Hawaii. That was the premise. That's why the organization was designed and that's how it was, how it was founded by Dr. Neil Chauhan and Dr. Cedric Strong, who work and live in the state of Hawaii. So we wanted to provide something that was accessible, affordable and equitable for all the residents in the state of Hawaii. And so considering the major shortages of providers in the state right now, Cloudwell is a great option because you can get care the same day, in just a few clicks through the comfort of your home. Yeah. Yeah, I, you know, as you as you describe that, I, I keep the word democratization pops up in my brain mm -hmm. because, you know, there, there, there's a disparity in the way people you know, uh, can get health care. And this tends to flatten that, democratize it, don't you think? Significantly. So, um, you know, a lot of times in many other different types of telehealth platforms, uh, it's very selective. It can be very selective in terms of the types of insurance plans and health plans that they accept. With Cloudwell Health, we accept all the major payers in the state of Hawaii, including Medicare and also Hawaii Medicaid, which is very rare, which is very unique. And so that was, again, goes back to our mission statement, providing care that's equitable for all the residents of the state of Hawaii. And even those who wanna pay out of pocket or who need to pay out of pocket, we will provide care as well. So to your point, there's significant um, equality in terms of how we deliver our services because we wanted to give back. We want to provide a significant community benefit. And by accepting all the major payers in the state, including again, those that pay out of pocket, that's our way of, of doing so. Yeah, that really touches me. So, um, you know, one question, um, I was having a discussion about this show, one of my buddies, and he said, oh, this has been around. Has it been around? I'm not sure it's been around. Can you talk about you know whether it's been around and how long it's been around and how you know uh, how Cloudwell differs from what's been around before? Sure. So telemedicine is not necessarily a new concept. It has been around for for about 10, 10 plus years, but it really came to the forefront during the COVID onset of the COVID nineteen pandemic, when many uh, clinics started to shut down, many outpatient facilities started to shut down. Telehealth was the vehicle to reach out and provide care to patients. But with the Cloudwell difference, it's quite significant. So if you use some of the national telehealth platforms, you could be living in Hawaii, but you could be interacting with a provider that's in Maine. And it's very difficult to establish a connection. You know, you're in Hawaii, you're trying to relay your care and your concerns to someone in Maine. There's a lot of different cultural nuances, communication nuances that are very different. With Cloudwell Health, you know that your provider is board certified in the state of Hawaii. So it's patients from the state connecting with providers and clinical coordinators from the state. And that creates a lot of, um, patients really like that a lot. It provides them a lot of comfort knowing that, oh, this is great. Not only can I receive care in just a few clicks, but the administrative coordinators I interact with, the clinical providers I interact with, they're also here in Hawaii. So when it comes to understanding the patient and navigating their care, we're very good at it because we live in the state. That's yeah. a significant difference. Not all telehealth platforms can do that. Yeah. 
Well, there's also questions of license too, right? Yeah. If, if I want to get medical advice uh, from somebody in Cincinnati, I always pick on Cincinnati, by the way. There's nothing special about Cincinnati. Uh, if I want to get a medical advice from a doctor in Cincinnati, there's an issue about licensure, isn't there? Yeah, there, there are uh, medical license challenges. With the public health emergency due to the COVID-19 pandemic, some of those have been waived uh, temporarily. But before the COVID-19 pandemic, and likely after we're in a more stable situation, so to speak, those license challenges will be put back into place to a certain extent. Mm -hmm. Maybe not to the way it was before because everybody has seen the benefits of telehealth. But regardless of, of those barriers, having a cultural connection to your provider is very important. You know, because people need to be able to understand you. They need to be able to understand where your concerns are, especially if you need specialty care or some second or third steps um, in your care management. It's great to have somebody that actually knows the terrain of the state. And that that can help a lot, especially yeah, recommendations. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, you know, can I pick my doctor? Um, you know, for, for example, I mean, I, and this is a real live world problem. I'm Japanese. Let's make me Japanese for a minute. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to be more comfortable with a Japanese doctor, or at least a doctor who has a, a Japanese name. That's no guarantee these days the doctor will be Japanese, but at least the doctor has a Japanese name. Can I pick a doctor? Uh, you can pick a doctor. We'll try our best to accommodate uh, when the, we have to make sure that the doctor is available during that particular time frame that you want or need the care. Uh, but our team will do our best to try and accommodate you as much as possible. Yeah. Okay. I, I do want to get into the, the you know, the technical and, uh, you know, the uh, production issues about this. But, but first, uh, I, I, it strikes me from what you said so far is that you've worked it out. So this is appealing to the community, to individuals who need access to medical care. That mm -hmm. seems clear. But how about the doctors? You know, in, in earlier efforts, um, the doctors were reluctant. Um, I'm not even sure why. Maybe it was professional issues, liability issues, uh, compensation issues, scheduling issues. How have you gotten by all of that in order to make the doctors make themselves available? So we're fortunate enough to have a medical team that really enjoys providing telemedicine services. So part of the the, the vetting process when, when we look at candidates to, to serve on our platform is, do they really have a passion for not only taking care of patients, but also telemedicine and how the process works? And the more we get into the detailed discussions with the providers during the interview process, that we're very selective. And we wanna make sure that those that are on the platform are comfortable with it and can provide care at a, at a very high level of uh, of excellence. And so a lot of that goes through during the vetting process of, of uh, people who want to be on the platform. But what we're finding is that once they're on the platform and taking care of patients, they absolutely love it. They love it. You know, they love interacting with the patients. They're very comfortable with the telehealth platform. And it's, and it's very easy for them from the comfort of their home to provide great medical care. So uh, we're very selective, but then the right people come forward and we're very fortunate to have them. Well, they have to be um, somewhat altruistic to do this. Mm -hmm. um, but a query whether they make the same m money as they would practicing clinically in their offices um, and whether, you know, um, whether that's um, an incentive or not. Um, if they don't make the same money, that's, that's a barrier. If they make exactly the same money, no barrier there because um, it's easier for them, you know, just like it is for you and me to sit on Zoom here. It's easier, I, you know, I don't have to get dressed up, right? Um, <laughs> in fact, the doctor can practice from home, as a matter of fact. So, so query, do they make the same compensation? And what about, you know, all those, the coding issues, right, for mm -hmm. doctors and the, and, the, and the filing the forms and doing all the, you know, what do you call it, uh, the paperwork. It's electronic paperwork, but doing all the paperwork that you have to do to practice medicine these days. Um, is it easier, harder, or the same? So our physicians, to your point, they can practice from the comfort of their home. And so uh, they to have that type of flexibility when seeing patients, especially some who have young children, they really enjoy it. It's a great addition to a lot of the day-to-day -day clinical care that they provide in a hospital or in a clinic. Um, so we have an electronic medical record 
And so through that electronic medical record, it makes it easier to code and bill for services appropriately and accurately. And so we have ways to help our providers make sure that they're documenting appropriately. And then depending on the acuity of the patient, we set a certain code, billing code, and then that can go automatically from our billing company to the insurance company. And so what has helped a lot for us is, is, is installing an electronic medical record. It's called elation. So elation is used uh, with a, at a significant level in the state of Hawaii. It helps a lot with the billing and coding and ultimately sending these to insurance companies. And so that, that, that has been a great addition because without an electronic medical record to assist with the billing and coding, a lot of that has to be done manually. And that takes a lot of time. Our administrative coordinators have spent a lot of time doing reconciliation. That still needs to be done with an, with an electronic format, but not to the extent of if you're doing it on paper. So we went- Are you, are you billing for the doctor? In other words, uh, do you, I mean, is it no fuss, no muss? The whole thing is automated as far as the doctor is concerned, <laughs> where the code is established. I mean, I guess he has to answer some questions, but the code is established. <clears throat> Uh, the bill is sent to the um, insurer. Uh, the copay bill is sent to the, the client, or he, or he pays uh, the patient. He pays with a credit card, what have you. Uh, and the doctor never really has to hire staff in order to practice. He never he never has to do all those aggravating, you know, human resource and paperwork issues that doctors have to do in their offices, which turns a lot of them out of the practice, frankly. Um, so, query: Is that all automated on on uh, on the system? So at the present time, we, we have a $0 copay. And so we've, we've waived copays because of the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic and the public health emergency. Oh, that's very nice. Yeah, yeah it's a great service to our patients. Uh, they really like that. Uh, we have a team of administrative coordinators that are part of Cloudwell Health. And part of a significant part of what they do is do a lot of the billing reconciliation after the visit has been done to make sure that we've captured all the appropriate information, that everything's been documented appropriately. If they have any questions, they'll go back to the provider, but they're really the conduit. They're the conduit between the actual visit from the provider to the, to the bill being dropped and going to the insurance, uh, to the billing company. So that administrative coordinator group provides a lot of the support for providers to do their job. So it's fairly simple. Because we have a robust and high-performing group of clinical coordinators, they can handle a lot of that. So it, it takes away, so the providers do not have to get involved in too much of the billing and coding, et cetera, which can be, to your point, very burdensome. Yeah, well, does that, does that mean, this is kind of a new way to practice medicine. I can practice, let's assume I don't want to have a clinic. I don't want, you know, I don't want to have the, 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 the traditional classical medical office I just want to do it from home. I'm licensed. I went to school. I, I know what I'm doing. So I do it at home like this, like you and me today. Mm -hmm. um, I have resources. I have the web to look things up. I have my books and so forth. Um, and of course, I have my Rolodex for referrals. Right? Um, but do I have to have a staff? Can I get along on Cloudwell Health without a staff? So if you're a provider and you want to join Cloudwell Health, we would have to go through the appropriate vetting process, but you can because we have a team that manages the infrastructure and the operations. So provided you're board certified in the state of Hawaii, provided that you want to, you have a passion for not only taking care of patients, but you want to provide telemedicine based services. Uh, we have an entire team that can support you in, in taking care of patients. And so uh, we have providers that live across the islands, different parts of the state that want to get involved. And once they join us, they really like it because we have a, we have a, an operating model that's, that's very user-friendly and provider centric. And so uh, to answer your question, yeah, I provided you check off some critical boxes. We can try and find a way to get you onto the platform. Yes. Mm, it almost makes you want to go to medical school. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's a, our providers love it. You know, there's there's we there's times when, you know, some of our providers have very young children. You know, some of the children are in the background and they're taking care of patients because it, it's it supports just the busy lives and especially with the COVID pandemic and you know the stay at home orders. It's it's very supportive 
and, and empathetic towards that. And yeah, that's and patients, great. And patients like it. Yeah, and, and truth is that um, everybody says, well, virtual meetings are not as, as flesh and blood. Mm -hmm. But I'll tell you, I do a lot of virtual meetings and I get to know people better mm -hmm. in a virtual meeting. It's a, sort of an intense connection. And, and uh, so I, I don't see any downside in a doctor. You know, we'll talk about, uh, you know, the physical aspect. That's That may be a downside. But um, I guess what I want to ask you next is about the scheduling. You referred to that a minute ago. Sure. Um, you got to find somebody who's available at the right time. You got to find a, uh, a patient, you know, who can connect on a, uh, a common ground schedule with the doctor that he would like to have or she would like to have. So how do you handle that? This is this is a technical question. How mm -hmm. do you handle the scheduling issues? Because you're talking about you know, iterations, um, uh, visits of uh, what, half an hour? I don't know what the, the common interval is, but um, how do you handle um, the amount of time and when and who is buying into what part of that schedule? So our schedules are mapped out, you know, weeks in advance. to make, And we always make sure that we know that certain providers uh, take shifts just historically during certain days, certain time blocks during the day or night. And so we design it based off of historical patterns. And then obviously we speak to the providers way in advance um, if, you know, to make sure that these schedules work for them. Now, if there's an emergency or somebody's not able to be on the platform, then we have a bench. We have a bench of providers that can come in uh, last minute if needed uh, to provide care. And so there's various tracks. So you have the, the urgent care slash primary care track. That's one block. You have, and, and pediatrics can be in that block or sometimes pediatrics will be separate. Then you have a mental health block. So that's our block with a team of therapists. That's a separate block. And so there is a lot of coordination and communication that has to take place. Uh, so again, we plan this out way in advance to really make sure that we provide care because we're open at all hours of the day and night. And so we're open at the present time from 6 a.m. to 1 a.m. the next day. So that's, that's a big chunk of time. And so we have to be very diligent and very conscientious to make sure that all those shifts are staffed with the right number of providers. What's nice with what I call the cloud wall difference is that our clinical coordinators who are from the state, they're, they all live in the state of Hawaii, they call patients before the appointment. And if you're a new patient, make sure that you're comfortable to make to walk you through what to expect during the appointment to walk you through you know this is your provider this is how it's going to work they'll answer your questions and they'll communicate with you even before the appointment and that's a very nice what i call high touch feature where it's like we're really connecting with you and making sure you're comfortable before the appointment even starts and then after the appointment is done with the provider we'll also check in with you to make sure that you have everything that you need especially for new patients and make sure you have all the right resources to answer any questions. A lot of telehealth platforms do not do that. Oh. Not gonna, and, and that's the what I call the high touch, patient focused way we deliver care. And so I give a lot of credit to our clinical coordinators because they handle a lot of this that we're talking about right now. And again, what's nice is that they all work and live in the state. So if you need labs done or radiology services, they know. They know We're going to talk about that. But, you know, that kind of engagement is really good. I and mean, if you go to a, a classical clinical visit, um, it's rare that you get a call from the doctor before or after. Yeah. You know, the, 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 the common approach is neither. Uh, although, you know, I have to say that Straub is pretty good about online mm -hmm. uh, information. And, you know, you can see the result. You can see the result of the of the tests and so forth. And now, in your system, in a Cloudwell Health system, I can look up the doctor, right? I'm going to see the doctor's bio. I'm going to see where he went to school, how long he's been practicing mm -hmm. or she, and, and in what areas uh, he's trained in and so forth, right? I can see that, right? You can see that. Yeah. You can see that. Um if you have any questions about the provider or any questions about how the care process works, our coordinators can help answer those questions. And so, yeah, that, all of that is very transparent for the patient uh, if, they have any, if they have any questions. And if you need to see a specialist after the appointment is over, our team can help you with that. And we can help you navigate the specialist uh, network that we have. Um, well, that's true. I want to make a case study with you, actually. Mm -hmm. 
case study. Sure. Okay, I, I wake up at three o'clock in the morning and I have a sharp pain in my zorch, which is an organ between the liver and the kidney. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's in Cincinnati, by the way. In Cincinnati, okay. Did you wake up in Cincinnati? <laughs> well, let's say that. Let's add that to my fact pattern. <laughs> okay. Now, um, okay, it's three o'clock in the morning. Uh, you don't have everybody on the schedule at that point in time. Um, how can Cladwell Health help me uh, when I'm in Cincinnati with a pain in my source? And I have come to rely on Cladwell Health. I like what you do, so I want to use Cladwell Health. What do I do in the system that you have? Okay, so we'll uh, we'll have some fun with this. Let's say you're from Cincinnati, but you're visiting Hawaii, and you have all right. Okay, yeah. fine. So, um, you know, if you if you run a Google search, you can find us. Um, there are certain type of keywords where we'll come up. You go to Cloudwell Health, book your appointment. In just a couple steps, we're going to ask you, you know, what's going on and everything. I um, ask you for some general information, which is all encrypted. And then we open right at 6 a.m. And so we will reach out to you. We're going to introduce ourselves to you. We're going to get a sense of how you're doing. And at 6 a.m., your appointment starts. And so depending on what you need and what the provider thinks needs to be the next steps to assess your situation, uh, that's, that's your appointment. And if you need to get labs done or you need to go to radiology or you need to go to an emergency room, our coordinators will help you with that. We'll assist you to try and find the, uh, the next step if necessary. If well, I'd be concerned about a pain in my Zorch, mm -hmm. especially if it's an acute pain and, and uh, it would be an easy uh, you know, conclusion that I need lab tests and I need to do some kind of differential on this. Um, so does Cloudwell Health help me affirmatively schedule the lab test, tell me where to go, what to do, what kind of test would be appropriate, um, and, and expedite my effort at getting a test? Yes, we can help you with all of that. Um, we also have uh, lab facilities in Hawaii that interface with Cloudwell Health. So the, because of our electronic medical record elation, those results can interface. And so if you go to the lab and we would tell you what's the best lab to go to, depending on where you are, but once those labs are drawn, those results can interface. And so it's a great service because it all flows right back into your chart. So we can track you and make sure that um, you're getting the appropriate level of care, but also when you come back or if there's any secondary steps, we know what those lab results are. So it's, it's, it's all electronic. Yeah. It's just always still going to the primary and the primary, he decides, and we all agree that my Zorch is in trouble. And uh, I, have to, I have to see a specialist. I have to see a Zorch specialist as soon as possible. Okay, now <laughs> is my primary on Cladwell Health gonna put me together with, with a Zorch specialist? And how, how, how does that work? So we have a specialist network. And so depending on, you know, we'll assume that this, this may need GI, some GI work uh, to address your Zorch situation. And so we would contact uh, the appropriate specialist in our network that we have uh, contractual relationships with to help expedite your care. And so we would get you to that next step. We would play a role, a direct role in helping you get to that next step. Now it could be, now there are situations where it's so serious that you, you have to go to the emergency room. And so we're very clear about that. Look, you know, based off our assessment, this cannot wait. You have to go to the ER. But if it's something that needs a more specialist focus and you have the, and there's, there can be some time, we'll help you with that. We'll get you to the next step. Yeah, well, it's just, it sounds like what would happen if I was visiting a doctor in person, actually. But yeah. it sounds like maybe... Uh, the Cloudwell Health doctor would would follow up, and he would check back with the Zorch specialist or the emergency room or whatever, uh, and check in with me later. Am I right? Yes, yes, we do that. If you have a primary care physician that needs to be briefed on, uh, mm -hmm. you know, what what ha what transpired when you were in Hawaii, uh, with your consent, we can do that. And so, it's just so your primary feels involved, knows what's going on with you, and is, is briefed on your most recent situation. Yes. So, you know, let's assume my, my, my Zorch is very exotic, whatever it is, 
And um, it's not the first time, not the only time it happens, and that I have a, you know, an ongoing problem with my search. Mm -hmm. And uh, I want to get back to the same doctor who helped me, you know, uh, steer a course through that channel in the first place. Mm -hmm. um, uh, how much trouble is it for me to? I guess it's a scheduling issue, but I want to go back to the same doctor as if as if I was on the outside in, right. in a clinical setting, and I want to always have him or her uh, because I like him. I like the way he operates. That's the wrong term to use. I, I don't want to use that term. <laughs> I like the way he, he moves. So um, yeah. can I stick with him? You can. Uh, we're gonna we'll try and accommodate you as much as possible. Now, uh, based off when. That doctor is on shift based off what time they're available. We have to link that up with when you're available and when you need to be seen. So I don't want to promise anything, but we'll try and accommodate you as much as possible. Um, yeah. All the doctors do a great job. All of them are first class board certified in the state of Hawaii. So there's a lot of nice interchangeability. So if for whatever reason you know, we're not able to accommodate you, we'll be very open and honest about it. But you'll be rest assured seeing somebody just as good. Mm -hmm. And of course, every doctor has access to my medical record. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, if I give them permission, I suppose they can get my medical record from my previous, um, you know, uh, doctors, my, my, my regular clinical doctors as well. Correct. Yeah, with yeah. your consent, um, yeah. with your signed consent, we can obtain those medical records from your previous uh, physician, yes. Oh, that raises that raises a whole bunch of questions about the technology. You mm -hmm. say signed consent uh, and take electronic signatures, Vic. Uh, okay. I, I give a lot of electronic signatures in my life. Do you take them? Uh, we're not at electron. We're not at signed yet uh, electronically, but we also work a lot with other practices. Who, once you sign it, will fax that consent to their office, and then they will fax. You know, we'll receive through fax a lot of your historical medical records, and then those get indexed and filed into our electronic medical record as uh, reference documents when you're receiving care. Yeah. Mm. So, I mean, I thought it would be helpful if I had a scanner attached yeah. to, to my computer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I wish I had one too sometimes. It would make it a lot, it make it a lot easier, but, um, but we'll get, we'll receive, we'll be very diligent about getting all your records. We'll receive everything. And, um, yeah, we'll, we'll file it in the in the charts so that depending on the physician that sees you, all the reference documents are there. Now let's talk about the technology now. I, mean, I assume you have a virtual program, sort of like Zoom or Skype or WebEx, um, and it's built into a website. Can you talk about the technology that you developed and that you're using now? All the patient interactions are done on Zoom. And so... Uh, our, our electronic medical record is encrypted and that's elation. But the way we're interacting right now, uh, we, use, we use Zoom. And, and that's, that's a good feature because a lot of people, especially due to COVID, are familiar with Zoom. And if there's any questions, then again, our, our coordinators are there to help you out. Yeah, and, and there are certain things, for example, that you you don't have to go to a laboratory to um, to, to learn if you're a doctor. I mean, for example, you can say, "Oh, your hand hurts. Uh, you have something going on in your hand. Why don't you show me your hand?" You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, I mean, am I right? There are things like that that are visible, and if you have you know decent reception, the doctor can see over over the Zoom. Am I right? Yeah. Yes, yeah, so uh, there are many situations, not all, but many, where the visit can be conducted on Zoom. And so uh, visually, the doctor can assess how you're doing. Now, if there's additional blood work or imaging that needs to be done because of those interfaces with other facilities, that information can flow back into the chart. So I can have an even more nuanced discussion with you because I'm looking at your labs. I'm looking at your uh, scans. And so... That helps a lot. It's it's like it's just like a regular visit to the doctor. Yeah. And there are some situations, to your point, where uh, in areas like dermatology, for example, they can assess visually if you raise your hand or you know, need to show them certain you know your neck. You know, well, I don't mind things. showing them in my tushy or either. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's uh, you know during COVID, 
a lot of these, a lot of these services went to telehealth. And what we're finding is that a lot of people, a lot of the providers, like this is pretty good. You know, this is this is better than expected. Yeah, so, makes uh, some medical determinations. So are you recording? Are you recording the visits? Are you recording, you know, when I show you something? We don't record the actual video visit, uh, but everything is documented in the medical record. And so um, if you want a, a copy of your medical record, you can receive it, but we don't record the actual video session, mm -hmm. uh, but everything is in the, is in the notes. You can take a snapshot though. Yeah. 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 Well, um, you know, we're almost out of time and I would be remiss if I didn't ask you about the future. You know, in ThinkTech, we are always looking at new software, new ways to make things work better every single day, if you will, every minute. And I would imagine, Vic, that you do the same thing. Can you talk about your, you know, your, mm, in your examination of the future, um, your, um, the frontier things that you plan that you want to accomplish? So telemedicine is definitely the wave of the future. Um, it really was brought forth into the spotlight during COVID, but it's something that's here to stay. And especially now, you know, for example, areas like primary care. You know, we just started offering virtual primary care in December of last year. And that's a big component because if you think about it, you know, it can take months to see a primary, primary care physician. Whereas with telemedicine, you're challenging the status quo. You can see get primary care services the same day. You know, so definitely clinical programs, new clinical programs are the wave of the future. Um, also wearables. So there's a lot of talk about, you know, your results, about blood pressure, your blood sugars, transmitting from your watch automatically into the electronic medical record. So patients can be managed virtually through devices. And so that's, that's really great because not only can things be managed virtually, but you don't have to be in front of a provider to receive care, we can track how you're doing without having to have a session like what we're having right now. And so that just really improves the quality of care, efficiency, cost, um, because if things can be managed virtually, it's a much more cost-effective way to do it. So in addition to the access, you're also lowering the bar, you're, you're lowering the cost levels when it comes to having wearables too. So definitely telehealth and AI around wearables to manage health. Yeah, it's interesting how COVID sort of made this clear. Uh, COVID yeah. gave us the opportunity. COVID made us look at the opportunity. And now we find that through, you know, through the internet, through technology, we can have um, medical engagements that are way more efficient. Yeah. That's got to save money. But the point of view is, uh, the point is that if you're sick, or if you're practicing medicine, you don't want to waste time. Um, mm -hmm. and, and to have the, uh, a primary the same day is like a miracle. And, uh, you know, you said that, um, you know, this is available with local doctors. This seems to me to be a tremendous way uh, to deflect the effect, the erstwhile effect of the, of the, doc, of the doctor shortage in Hawaii. Because yeah. just looking at it numerically, it doesn't take, it takes fewer doctors to practice um, it, and, and, and patients can reach them more easily. It's like, this has got to be the way of the future for a good percentage of medical practice right now. And I'm sure that's, that's uh, central in, uh, in Cloudwell. I wanna ask one more question. I know we're a little bit over, but Mike, <laughs> when, you and I, when you and I talked earlier, um, you mentioned that Cloudwell also did mental health and in the time of COVID, mental health uh, is obviously, obviously, every day it's more clear. It's more important than it was in terms of the, mm -hmm. the demographic, in terms of the community, in terms of community mental health. We really have to address that. So tell me what you do with mental health. So we have, uh, so we offer virtual mental health services. And so we have a team of therapists, licensed therapists, that through virtual sessions provide um, emotional support for those in need. And so the, to your point, this has been a, a critical area you know, worldwide 
just the, due to the, especially due to the COVID-19 pandemic, there's such a significant demand for timely and high quality mental health services. And so I'm very proud to be part of an organization that offers such great mental health services. You know, it's, it's hard to find, but again, just through a couple clicks, you know that you're receiving mental health care through Cloudwell, but through somebody that actually works and lives in the state of Hawaii. So this is not a therapist that might live in you know, Florida or North Carolina. Cincinnati. Cincinnati. It could be, it's somebody from your state. And with, and that just helps develop a connection because sure. you know, with these challenges, you wanna, you wanna confide in somebody that you feel comfortable with. Yeah. And so in just a few clicks on demand, when you want it, when you feel like you need it, a therapist are there for you. And oh, so, that is remarkable. Yeah, yeah. We, they're, they're, they're just a wonderful team. We're very grateful to have them. They provide wonderful care, wonderful comfort. And especially during this very difficult time over the past couple of years, uh, they're there. They're there to help the community. And so, um, it's yes, it is an, an available service through Cloudwell Health. Well, Vic, I, I, I suggest that um, you're doing what you were born to do. <laughs> <laughs> and you have an enormous amount of uh, psychic benefit out of it. And you're um, providing great value to the community. I wish you well. I wish Cloudwell Health well. And I hope we can circle back and, and talk about it some more. Uh, Vic you, Acharya, uh, Cloudwell Health. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jay.